Clan Masters Invitational here. There we go. Game just about to launch. And first map is going to be Dry Arabian, guys. In case you guys didn't see the overlay that was scrolling at the bottom left side of my screen. And let's start by talking a little bit about the positions. I'm going to stick with the team Unforeseen Consequences for now. I'm on the point of view of Chris. He's playing on the pocket position with Mongols. To his left, you've got Nikov playing with the Mayans here. The other pocket to the right of Chris. It's going to be Menelis playing as the Chinese. And to the very far right, we've got Hans being played by Miguel. On the other side, the Chinese team, we've got Hingua fighting against Miguel. It's a hunt on Hunt's War. Quite interesting for me, at least. Hingua is going to be supported by yellow player. That's Xiao Xiong playing as Mayans. On the other yes. side, we've got Lix playing with the red color as Spanish. And at the very far left, we've got Mysterio playing as Mongols. What about the positions, Nilfert? Which ones do you prefer? Well, the first thing we have to mention is the civilizations before we actually mention the position. Because the combination of um, the Brazilian, uh, Argentinian and Canadian players went for Chinese at the first. Instead of Spanish, of, right? Exactly, instead of Spanish yes. uh, for China A here. So obviously Chinese extremely strong, the steam bonus is so good, giving them more food in their farms, so early advantage, but the trade bonus in the end for the Spanish is deadly as well. Indeed, very hard choice for players, I always reckon. I'm right now on the point of view here of Nikov. Nikov on a good way to try to steal a board. Let me see if that's what he's going to try to do. He's going to be seeing it, that's for sure. There it is. It's on his line of sight. He's not going to think twice. There he goes, the first board trying to be stolen. On the bright side for Mr. Yo, he's very close by. He can just take his scout. And do keep in mind, the scouts are a little bit faster than the Eagle Warriors. Yeah, exactly, but the Eagle's not getting a lot of hits. The distance to the town center is pretty close, so I think with Nikov's skill, it should be an easy lord there. Ah, stopping already. too much, though, right? Stopping a little bit too much, Nikov there. Getting a couple of extra hits. I'm not sure he wanted to do that. We can see that Lex is going to be trying to go there to strike and stop, but he's not going to be on time. I think Nikov has got this. The TC is very close by. Both need to go back, and there it is. The first board has been stolen. And considering that Yo was going to be playing as Mongols, you think this is going to be a big thing? No, for because Mongols do have that incredible hunt bonus, right? Yeah, obviously they have. So having two boards would have helped out for sure. And even two players blocking there and still not managing to steal. But look at Lux, he's trying yep. to return the favor. He's re stealing now. Counter steal here. Nikov has spotted this as well. He's going to be trying to stop it. Trying to place himself between the board and the scout, as opposed to just placing himself in front of the scout. I guess that's the best option here. And that's really hard to say for me, Nilfer. What's the best way to stop us laming like this? Uh, it's so tough to say. If the lag is big, I think going for the scout is a bit bigger, uh, better, because obviously you get a lot more hits from the boar and the eagle warrior or the enemy scout. But if the lag is pretty low, you'll just try to stop the boar, and because you can micro better with your eagle. But it's tough to say, because actually if your enemy is doing everything right, there's no chance of stopping it. But just so much stealing taking place right now. And right now, the point of view of Miguel, he's just about to steal one of the boars from Higua. Is he going to be able to do it? Very low on HP. I think he's going to be able to take it. There it is. Needs to make sure that he does not get one more hit. Oh, that's the GG for the scout. And on the other hand, I just saw that Nate Kavis just lost his second board as well because Mr. Yo is trying to steal it back. So look at that. And even <laughs> look at how many boards are running into the, uh, to Mr. Yo's TC. I can see th two boards just under it. There's a third one on the way. Mr. Yo seems to be collecting boards all the way across the map. And that means that Nikov is going to be the one with one board behind. What an interesting <laughs> turnout of events. Oh, Jesus Christ. How did that happen? Starting with minus one board and then after two minutes uh, having you got three boards. Board. <laughs> exactly. Such a weird, untypical scenario here. Yeah, and for those of you guys who are not very familiar with the Age of Empires vocabulary or the dynamics on a 4v4 game, we will be talking a lot about flank and pocket position, and to those of you who are not very familiar with that, when we talk about flank, we mean the players at the edge of the map for the unforeseen consequences. That would be Purple here, Miguel and Nekov. Those are the flank players. The ones in the middle, Chris and Menelist, are going to be the pocket players. Same thing applies, of course, for the Chinese team here. Mr. Yo and Hingua would be the flanks, as opposed to Xiao Xiao and Lynx being the pocket players. Exactly, and Miguel and Jinghao, as we saw, Miguel got a boar steal, but look at the GC of Jinghao. He had two boars as well, so it seems like 
they exchange balls as well on the right hand side. The laming is strong in these ones. The laming is very strong in these ones. And you can see the barracks are up for both players. So we're going to see a drush on drush board here in Elpfer. Exactly, both players sending one bullet to earn gold to get this extra 10 gold, re uh, getting up to 60 and therefore building three militia uh, without building a gold mining camp. So nice move there and most likely we will see three again, three militia and then trying to go into castle age for both flanks here. Okay, I'm curious about what you think about the Mongols' early Dark Age strategy. Of course, we can see here that Mr. Yo is going to go for a Drush as well. I've got the feeling that, I don't know, one year ago, two years ago, the Mita was sort of going for Scouts, right? But it, this seems to be shifting now, and I see more and more nowadays players going for a Drush as Mongols. What do you think about that? Mm, not really sure, because as you saw in the Naps games, uh, they went for Mongol Scouts uh, most of the time. So so I think the Drash is only a uh, reason because the distance ex is extremely close and most likely he wants not to go for like late scouts, mm -hmm. wants Nikov to wall and then not do anything with his Drash. So he just Drashes as well and gets into Castle Age earlier. Let's try to follow what's going to be happening here between... Mr. Hinghua and Miguel. Apparently, Hinghua wants to wait a little bit more. He's got the scout right there. And not the f not the case for Miguel. Miguel seems to be missing his count. Did he just lost it? Nope. Taking a look at the dashboard. And you can always take a look at my dashboard here, guys. You can see loads of information. Population, Ida villagers, villagers, fish, military, kill and death status as well. Just make sure to throw a look every now and then and try to understand what's going on. Let's me take a look. I can see the Eagle Warriors from Xiaoxiong is there. Try to help his teammate Hinghua. You can see the scout from Menelis is on the way as well. Miguel is waiting for this. This is gonna be a fair engagement here. Five against five so to speak. Sort of depends who's gonna have the better micro on the right side here in Ilford. Yeah, absolutely. I think he can easily take this fight because if he's losing, he can easily take a villager there. Now both, both players decide to take the fight. Mentalist and Chao Ching helping out, as you already mentioned. I think this should be pretty even now. Even the villager will be taken by Miguel, and I think most units should die here. Yeah, incredibly even fight, so to speak. I couldn't say that any of the players is going to have a huge advantage right here. I guess Hingua just lost everything, but then again, Miguel just lost all of his militia as well. Unfortunately for Miguel, he also lost his scout in the process. That means it's going to be harder for him, but Hingua ends up losing it as well. And looks like Xiao Xiong is going to be the only one keeping his scout alive. Very even, all in total. But what about that goal from Miguel Nilfer? It is in the back right, but it's right behind the forest. Do you mind that? Uh, yeah, I don't like the mining camp. Because I don't think like too many villagers should be able to go for very efficient mining there. And obviously if he wants to go for catfishers, he wants to have a lot of villagers on gold. But already reaching feudal age, I think he will just go for expos for now. But Jinghua already walled and Miguel is going for an expo tower forward here. Ooh, that's interesting. I and mean, I'm right now taking a look at what's happening on the base of Nikov. As you can see, Chris here didn't go for the standard fast castle. He went for scouts. I am, don't like this, that Chris is losing so much time trying to fight off the drush from Mr. Yo. I can understand why he's doing it, because he wants to help his teammate, but I think he's losing a little bit too much time here. What do you think, Nilfert? Well, um, he's yeah, only... I just defending. lost a scout, man. Just lost a scout. Not ideal. Uh, this should never happen, but Nikov is not really helping out with villagers as well. And as you can see, now the strategy of Unforeseen is to go offensive on all sides. Early scouts early offensive towers and a lot of aggression offensive towers here by Nikov as well just as you pointing out and was just taking a look at my dashboard right here on the top right side I could see that coinage was being researched by Xiao Xiong Xiao Xiong is the pocket playing his mains that means he will be slinging someone up for I will try to understand who exactly is that going to be let me take a look at the achievements so far he is not slung any resources but which one would you be slinging here well, as you can see, Jing Ho obviously Hans, is Hans going probably, for right? castle, and Yo is only going for feudal age, so he absolutely has to sling the hunt because, as you can see, Lix is going for conquistadors, and slinging a guy with only one castle will not help out too, too much. Okay, what do you think about this aggressive play right here from uh, Nikov? He obviously does not realize that Mr. Yo is completely open from the left side. 
I'm left wondering why is he spending so much time trying to take down that house. Quite losing a bit of quite a time. On the other side, we got Miguel. He was able to drop a tower, and that seems to me like it was a very nice tower. Unfortunately for him, he was going to be fighting a player that is going to be getting a sling. So it's going to be really, really bad for him. He's got a horrible gold right there at the back, as I just said before. He's probably going to stay in Philo for a couple more minutes, and he will be facing a slinged Hunts player on Castle Age. It's going to be hard for him. Yeah, absolutely. Only having five farms and... Both flanks decided to go with four and five villagers, respectively, uh, forward. So the ecos of the flanks will be extremely weak, and they will be so vulnerable against any sling incoming knights from Lord Chang. Yeah, yeah I sort of understand what they're trying to do. They don't want to fight sling with sling, but. Uh... Nowadays, it seems to be a hard thing to do, right? I mean, you sort of want to go really aggressive to try to cancel a sling for any of the players, but it just feels really hard and really not really worth it to me. You can take a look at what's going to happen here with Miguel. I'm not sure if Nikov is going to be doing a little bit better. We can try to take a look at the economy from both players. You can see that Miguel, that Nikov here is on 33 villagers, Mr. Yo on 33 villagers as well, so no huge damage has been done on Mr. Yo's economy either. Uh, yeah, exactly. Not losing a lot of villagers, building defensive towers. Nice job there by Mr. Yone. You can absolutely see why he's considered to be one of the top tier players in the world. And let's take a look at Miguel's map. It's so open, and both middles or pockets are already walled in. So Love Tank will have like an easy job only going for Miguel, and he will have like an impossible spot to wall. Good thing here for Miguel, he was able to take down one of the stables. Looks like the gate is gonna go down really soon, but then again, he will be fighting knights from Hunt, and you can see those are plus one already, the plus two is on the way. Only Bloodline's missing, and he's going even for three stables. Looks like the lumber camps, the lumberjacks, just went there into right into the back of Mr. Hingua's base. That means they're gonna be safe for the time being. I guess Hingua wants to wait until he's got Bloodlines at least. He does not want to engage this. There are a very decent amount of spearmen right there by Miguel. So it could be hard for him to engage this without bloodline. Especially considering that Manolis is there with a couple of camels as well. Yeah, great uh, anti-sling uh, strategy there. Going for now even bloodlines kicking in for La Cheng. Let's see if he wants to take a fight or if he wants to sneak around. He has to tell Ching, uh, Chao Ching to open it. Or he has to take a fight against... Spearmen, archers, and camels, even with plus one defense up. I'm really not sure. Looks like he's just about to take it. I'm not sure about this Nilford. Anyway, he's gonna go for it. And probably didn't see. He didn't realize that the camels are there from Menelis. Looks like they've got a very nice position here. The spearmen are gonna be attacking the knights. I'm not sure he's gonna be winning this. Looks to me like Miguel could be taking the top of the hill to try and get a couple of extra hits. But looks to me like they are winning this fight. Most of the archers are still alive. Miguel's got a couple more. In the meanwhile, the camels are going down, though. And the Hunt's team bonus just seems to be playing a major role here with them working so fast that the knights can just be replenished and keep reinforcing the fight really fast. And looks to me like the, uh, the fight went in favor of Kingwa at the end of the match. Yeah, he obviously won it, but it was kind of cost efficient still for Unforeseen. Uh, fighting with spearmen and camels, and still so much was left. And as you can see, now Love Chang is get receiving the sling for like several minutes now, and didn't kill a single villager yet. He only killed army. Yeah, he needed to spend all the time, all the army he had, to try to defeat this forward here from Miguel and Menelis. Looks like he was able to do that for the time being. He's gonna try to rewall this. Gonna lose a couple of villagers there in the process, at least one, eventually two as well. But it looks to me like Miguel and Menelis are doing the right thing for the time being. Let me try to understand what's happening it's here on the left side of the map. Go ahead. Exactly. Looks now coming in a fail wall by Nikov and Conquistadors coming in. And Conquistadors are so good uh, with killing villagers, raiding in Castle Age, so tough to defend. And Nikov isn't having enough archers there. I think he only has six archers already, losing like seven or eight Lumberjacks here. Not the greatest start for Nikov. Yeah, he definitely needs Chris to walk in with those knights. But even two knights are going to be a hard thing. To tackle those conquistadors with a decent micro which of course Lex is gonna have look at that one of the knights is gone all the three conquistadors are still alive I guess in the same time we've got Nikov doing a nice job here on Mr. Yo's economy he was able to kill most of the archers that Mr. Yo had there 
And they seem to be close when it comes to army. Mr. Yo is the first one to click up the castle H, though. That means Nikov is going to be in a hard spot. He's not watching this. He's going to be losing all of those archers. At least, at least one more is going to go down. Looks like at the same time his economy, though, is safer for now. Mm, yeah, I think Nikov was struggling, only clicking up now and just vulnerable to so many raids on, yeah, just different spots. So, yeah, Nikov will just struggle to get into a very good eco here. And uh, not getting stone at this stage of the game and now even sending more villagers on gold and now sending some villagers on stone. But his eco will be extremely weak in this game. Yeah, really hard for Chris to fight this alone. Nikov has got basically no archers at this moment. He will need it to be fighting alone conquistadors. It's a very hard task, but looks like he's got a nice positioning here. He's very close to the conquistadors. He's got camels. Camels do have an attack bonus against those conquistadors, but Lix is just doing an awesome job here. Just keep hitting and run, hit and run, hit and run. Doing an amazing job at that. He mostly kept all of his conquistadors. He lost one, if anything. So really nice micro here by Lix doing the right thing with those conquistadors. Yeah, seems like they're not playing with a lot of lag because the shoot delay isn't too big for all these conquistadors. Great micro there by Lux and yeah, just sniping so many units without losing a single conquistador. Great move there on the left hand side. Yeah, at the beginning of the game I was sort of fearing that the right side is going to be the problem, but so far Menelis and Miguel were able to hold that sling so well. And right now it seems to me like the concern for the unforeseen consequences team is going to be on the left side. Nikov is about to reach Castle Age. I don't see many archers. Well, he's got them here at the front. To be fair, the numbers are quite evenly matched between him and Mr. Yo. The problem would be Chris. Does he have enough numbers to match those Conquistadors from Lex? Lex doing so much damage with these Conquistadors. This is exactly how you want a Spanish pocket to play, Nilford. <laughs> yeah, absolutely doing so much damage. And now on the left hand side, Jingwa is Nice walls! No, nice wall. Yeah, exactly. Miguel is finishing them in the last possible second. Now taking a good fight, all the knights are trapped. And Miguel is reaching Castle Age without any villager loss. How is that possible? Didn't Great lose. defense there by Miguel. Really nice team communication here between Miguel and Menelis. What an awesome job. This guys will be able to do. Let me see if Nikov is going to be able to tackle those crossbows for Mr. Yo. Mr. Yo obviously going to take the hill. He's got the plus two upgrade. Nikov has got a two. Looks to me like he will need to be waiting here for the help of Chris. Chris, for the time being, is still too busy trying to micro against the conquistadors from Lix. Well, Lix is being a really headache here for Chris and for Nikov. There's just not much that they can do. In the meantime, looks like Nikov is going to be trying to engage the archers, but he lost so many in the process, and that means Mr. Yo has got the huge advantage when it comes to army right now. Chris won't have a chance of engaging those conquistadors because there's just too many of them, and Lex is microing this like a boss. Yeah, absolutely. Always chilling on the hill, trying to catch a camel there, ca catch a, 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 a camel on the other side, doing a lot of damage. And Nikov losing most of his archers really will not help out on the defense. And the points already are quite clear in favor of SY team here. And look at that castle just under Nikov's nose. It's going to be taking down a couple of those farms. I guess it's good for him that the gold and the wood line are still going to be protected. But having a castle so close to your base is never ideal. Of course, Lick is going to be joining the party right now with his conquistadors. Chris, for the time being, just chilling right there at the right, the right side. side. Big fight over there. Oh well, oh well. Let's, let's switch to fight there. there fighting against uh, the Knights of Love check, and he's taking a kind of bad fight. I yeah, it's gonna win. They're gonna win. Miguel and Menelis are gonna win this for sure. For sure. Too many crossbows here. Looks like a wasted fight here for Hingwa, in my opinion. We can try to take a look at his economy at this point. He's got uh, 74 villagers. A little bit below Lix. What about Lix? What an incredible game this guy is having. I can take a look at his resources. Considering he's the one getting the sling, he's just about to click Imperial Age. But I have to say, what an incredible performance so far by Miguel and Menelist. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Defending beautifully against the sling. And I think they would have the upper hand on this side because obviously Mentalist, um, 
They're having a lot of camels and Miguel still with a lot of crossbows. They can easily push there and the amount of villagers on the bottom side is just so much higher for uh, the unforeseen team. But the struggle is on the top side and if we get Mr. Yo there was kind of an unheard eco for several minutes now and blocking a lot of Nikov's eco. If he's getting into Imperial Age and gets out this strong Elite Mango dice, Nikov will have huge problems. Yeah, taking a look at the villager count is quite heavily in favor of Mr. Yo. As you can see right here on my dashboard, it's 68 against only 47 villagers for Nikov. Nikov is certainly hurting, and considering Chris is on 82 villagers against 98 villagers from Lix, this is just an incredible performance by Lix so far. Being able to do so much damage with this Conquistadors, being able to boom like an incredible player. It's an amazing performance so far, Felix. He's the one to click to Imperial Age. The first one after Hingwa, obviously, was the one getting the slink. He's expected to be the first one to click to Imperial Age. But Lex is gonna be following him very closely. And that means that Nikov and Chris are gonna be having a very hard time to try and defend this. Yeah, exactly. A lot of Paladins will be out. And yeah, just unforeseen not having a team wall and Castle obviously on the north blocking a lot so Paladin ratings will be crucial and they should hit like every spot because obviously the middles are kind of walled for themselves but they cannot expand if all the map is full with Paladins and as you can see Chaoqing even trying to get more map control is sending very ballsy villagers oh God, and walls. <laughs> I guess I understand what he was trying to do but it doesn't seem to me like that was that made a lot of sense to be fair these walls seem to be a Quite random to me. Anyway, he's still trying to do them here. Look at that. He's still trying to do them for some reason. Feels like a little bit of troll walls in my opinion. Anyway, a little bit of raiding was done here by Hingwa. He was able to take down a couple of villagers from Miguel. Nice job by him. But you weren't mentioning Paladins here. Well, there it is. I didn't see any stable before, but here they are. Paladins are going to be the option here for Lix. He's going to go for Paladins with Spanish. Quite what we were expecting, just as you mentioned before. I was just a little bit surprised that the stables were not up a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, a bit late with the stables, maybe, but he was still producing out of his very early five town centers there, so just having a great eco. And yeah, the good thing is that Chris and uh, Mentalist went for full camels defend, but just now Mentalist is clicking to Imperial Age, so camel upgrade um, will take some time as well. So I think for the next four or five minutes we will have Cavaliers only fighting against Castle Age camels. Not a good thing for Unforeseen. A couple of cavalry archers are there. No bloodlines for Miguel at this point in time. It's going to be a hard fight as I just pointed out. Let me see if they will be able to handle this. It's going to be a very hard thing. And taking a look at what's happening here on the left side, Mr. Yo placing down a couple of castles very strategically. Trying to make sure that the resources that can be denied for Nikov is going to be denied of one of these golds. He's going to be making a castle there, I've got the feeling. The economy is just so much in his favor. He's the first one to click up to Imperial Age. Obviously, Nikov, I would assume, is not going to be any close to doing it. And still needs a little bit of resources, a lot better than I thought, though, to be fair. It's going to be a little bit behind Mr. Yo for sure. There goes the second castle once more right in front of Nikov's face. Oh yeah, such an aggressive castle. By the way, I like how Chris is reading the situation. Adding five more stables going up to seven now because he knows. Okay, this guy is going for a lot of paladins. I just need to add heavy camels to my mango dice to take any good fights. And Chris is preparing beautifully for the late game. But will it be too late? Because obviously Mr. Yo will t uh, have a much stronger army than Nikov on the left hand side. Take a look at the right the side. Way, a very big fight here in the middle. Indeed. Let me see how will this go for him. Menelis has got a couple of camels, but just as you mentioned before, those are not heavy camels. Menelis still has yet to reach the Imperial Age, but seems like they are winning the fight. Those monks, those cavalry archers and crossbows seem to be enough to sort of keep Hingwa back in the back foot. He's going to be needing to go back a little bit more. Paladins by now. Will he try to engage at this moment? He's got the full upgrade on those Paladins. It's plus for attack. It's plus for armor. He will try to engage once more, but that heal proving to be so important for the Unforeseen team. 
Yeah, the, ho the hill and the monks are the only thing why they're still holding on. Now obviously mentalist uh, reaching Imperial Age, instant upgrade of heavy camels, so the good thing. But obviously the paladins are so mobile and we will see paladin ratings all over the map and unforeseen will just struggle to get a good trade rolling because they can't control the map, can't wall the map properly and will just get raided so heavily. But nice an nice anticipation by mentalist blocking all the paladins in ratings from Jinghua for now. Constantly done here by Mentalist, pretty much previewing where the Paladins were gonna go. And take a look at the left side, seems to be such a hard spot here for Nikhov. He's gonna be losing more and more economy. His population now dropped to below 100, so much, so further below Mr. Yo, his opponent. And we can take a look at the villager number. It's 77 for Nikhov, 109 for Nikhov, a huge advantage. We've got the Cavaliers there by Mr. Lix. We got the crossbows from Mr. Yo, and Chris is there with Mengudai, not elite just yet. He will go for heavy camel first. What do you think about this? Well, I think, obviously, you want to go for heavy camels. Uh, you want to go for the Mangudais, but he needs heavy camels first. So, as I said, I think that's the absolute right decision because Lux is obviously going for full Paladin. And, yeah, you just need to outcount it because, obviously, Lux's ego is better than Chris at this point. Just enough army to counter this, I'm not sure it is. Anyway, the heavy camels are completed now, but so is the Paladin upgrade here for Lix. It's gonna be very hard. Two castles out there trying to do the job. It's gonna be still very hard here for Nikov to try to keep his base protected for the time being. He does not seem to have any kind of army. I guess those crossbows from Mr. Yo are gonna die quite soon, but the Paladins, man, the Paladins are the problem here. And the amount of paladins as well. Nico Zico is absolutely in shambles now. I think so many villagers, although they're in protection of two castles, but just plus four defense paladins streaming in there. Nico just struggling. Now he reached Imperial Age, but with what population? 55 and still dwindling. Not looking good for him on the left hand side. <laughs> to be fair, Mr. Xiaoxiong here keeps just completing those walls randomly across the map and apparently no one is very interested in trying to stop him. I guess the right side here is still gonna be missing those walls from red from yellow player. But anyway, nice job here. When you're only slinging, you don't have much to do, so why not try to make a couple of random walls in the middle of the map? Anyway, Mr. Nikov dropping population severely. He's down to 40 population and just 30 seconds ago he was on 91 population, just lost so much. I just don't see much of a chance of Chris holding this on his own because Mr. Yo by now has got such a crazy amount of Mengudai, not elite, but soon to be elite Mengudai. And when that's the case, it's not really much that they can do against this. Exactly, Chris now only preparing to have a good counter army against Lux. Uh, those soon to be elite Mangudites from Yo will just crush everything uh, of the force Chris is trying to throw. And now Chris is taking a good fight. Nice team player there. All the camels countering all the paladins in one screen. Big fight, and as you can see, Lux is singing better of it and is telling Love Chang to retreat. Nice move there by Unforeseen. And they are holding for now, but it's still not looking good the moment Yo uh, joins the fight. Yeah, I guess you're a little bit further ahead of me. I would try to speed up a little bit the uh, thing because you were just mentioning it a little bit for before me before I was even able to see it. So I'm just going to be fast forwarding this a little bit. Guys, don't you worry. The speed is going to slow down once I catch up to the game. For some reason, I was a little bit behind. But I can see the fight you were talking about. It was a good fight when Menel is there and with Chris there at the same time as well. Okay, Hingua AOC close, so we need to go back. Do you have, do you see uh, that on the chat too? Mr. Yeah, Yosei, I Hingua, can see that as well. well. So let's go back, boys. Oh, but this game looks pretty... Looks quite finished, doesn't it? Tough. Looks quite finished. Let's be fair here. Anyway, I'm not going to check the achievements. Gonna wait for the players to try to restore it. And uh, what we do?